You're not gonna quite believe this, but I got this Samyang 85mm 1.4 autofocus Canon EF mount lens, that was a lot of words, for £180. This retails online for 400, 500, 600, depending on the condition. I got it for £180, which is just bonkers, and I will tell you the whole story at the end of this video, but for now, let's jump right into the city of London. Let's go take some photos. I started this shoot as the evening was drawing to a close, so some of it is just a little bit low light, and then most of it is typical nighttime city photography. Let's jump into the city, let's start taking some photos and seeing what we can do. Oh, wow, this, this compression looks mad. Look at all them layers in one frame. So just looking up at the top of the walkie-talkie, just peeping over, creeping over the top of these other buildings. Grey sky kind of makes this look a little bit dull, but we'll have to deal with that. It's hard to expose when the clouds are so boring because you don't know if it's too bright or too dark, but something at like an F5, 125 shut speed. Something like that's kind of cool. I see this guy in front of me just vaping. Try to get some of that smoking action. Classic overdone shot of the shard over there. Probably throw a super moody edit on this just to make it interesting. But that's kind of cool. Shard once again just peeping over here. That looks actually, actually something pretty cool about this framing. Again, I'll probably throw a moody edit on that to make it a little bit more interesting. Let's see what this boat is like, eh? We shoot along this street at this guy. Nice, close, compressed look-up shot of the walkie-talkies. Throw it at a little bit of a weird angle. Boom. That's cool. Lots of texture in that photo. A couple of nice cinematic shots there. This guy. Jeez, that's so sharp. I mean, that photo's not really of anything, just a guy looking at his phone, but that was so responsive. Let's get this guy just getting onto the bus here. Nice and shallow depth between just shooting across the bus. Let's see if we can get Tower Bridge in there as well. Yeah, that's really nice. Probably take a really nice portrait of you with this lens. Yeah, definitely. Uh, can you have your umbrella out? Can you, it's not raining. Can you use it? It is raining. Any excuse to use your umbrella? Let's get an organic street shot. This is definitely not set up, and I definitely don't know this gentleman. Hey. That 1.4 just showing off there. Let's pretend that was a natural moment and I didn't know who you are. Oh, yeah. Very nice. I like the umbrella. Wow, just looking back at the shard, 85 is so close. I'm actually just gonna shoot the top third of the shard, I think, at 1.4, make sure I'm nice and sharp. Let's see what that looks like when I'm editing that. It's hard to tell at the moment. And just to the left of me, we've got the city of London. Lovely compression right there. Layers of lights and skyscrapers. Let's see what that looks like when I'm editing. It's hard to see these low light photos just off of the screen. Um, you can definitely tell when you open open them up in Lightroom and see what the photos are really like. But first impressions are that it is nice and sharp. This is nice. Here we go, this guy. Lone rider over there. Kind of a bit silhouetted. Something quite cinematic about that. It's like this guy just walking down here. The lights on embankment actually look so good. So I'm going to get focused on him. Tap on screen to focus. That's very nice. Love the lights on the side of the... I've got a solo yellow hood in front of me. Matches the lights on the right hand side. That's quite chill. You can see the rainfall as well. It's definitely 1.4 territory now. With the lights and reflections. This hot dog stand right in front of me looks pretty appetizing for a nice street photo. We're gonna focus on the guy in the shop who's patiently waiting for some customers. That's kind of cool. Now it's really dark out now, so we have to just spot little pockets of light, little artificial light coming from shops, coming from lampposts. And I spotted this cool little crypt 
doorway literally no idea what that is but there's a little bit of light coming from it so i'm just waiting for a few subjects to walk through i've got touch screen shutter enabled as well so every time i touch the screen it'll take the photo which is uh kind of cool here we go just getting one person silhouetted cool that's kind of cool oh this shot giving us some great lighting just a shot of those two chaps looking into the restaurant right there it's quite nice This lens is looking super sharp from first impressions. Did you get them looking in? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Gym box in front of me looks like it's popping off. Always get some nice silhouettes with shops like this. Just providing the goods. Just gonna wait for one person, I think, to fill this empty space just to make it pop off a little bit more. There we go, that's kind of cool. Oh, we've got this shop across the road which is just providing the goods. Lots of silhouettes and lots of artificial light. We're going to see what we can do here. Shooting at ISO 125. We're going to bump the shutter speed to 1 200. Oh, some of these look pretty cool. Oh, nice little bit of action there. That guy's just in motion. Yeah, I got this. Oh, the same oh, guy. The same basically, moment. I basically got the same photo. <laughs> That's brilliant. So there's just this guy on the left. Here, I don't even know what he's doing. Inspecting some jewelry. I don't even know what he's doing. He's making jewelry. Making jewelry. That's cool. I think yeah, he's. Put, I, I think he's putting something into, into a ring. Oh yeah! Wow, he is like, putting the diamonds onto a ring or something. This 85 is actually perfect for. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Ooh. Ah, you can actually, yeah, you can see exactly what he's doing. Wow, that's amazing. Just look how cool the roof or the decorating in Covent Garden looks. So you get some nice detailed shots here. Shooting a 1.4, obviously, so we can get that bokeh. Look at these balls, man, this is so sick. I was just actually thinking, it's like how nice the roof looks. Okay, yeah, that gives us actually something to look at. If I'm just focusing on Apple Market here, right in the middle of frame, that's really cool. Let's go for a portrait version. This guy sat down here just taking a break, smoking in this open area. Just a nice colour match here with a girl in the red coat matching that red building thing. I don't know what that is in there. But a lovely little colour match with burgundy and red there. That's kind of cool. And that, that guy sat down in the bottom right frame as well. Also mainly I need a TV for that. Just looking at this donut shop right now. I'm gonna try and get a nice sharp photo of the guy making the donuts. Let's see what we can do. 80, 85 is actually so punched in. I'm gonna change this to face tracking. Let's see how good this lens is with the Canon A6's autofocus. And I'm gonna put, actually one shot's fine. See if this can. Oh my days, no way. Fuck me, this camera surprises me every time. There's a couple of decent photos here, I think. Hopefully, the lens is nice and sharp. Oh. Perfect. Lovely work from the R6 and the Samyang <laughs> working together perfectly. Sometimes I like to walk around with my Canon camera and just do this, just for fun, <laughs> knowing that. Sony shooters could never, <laughs> unless you got the new new Sony A7 IV, A7S III. Just looking into this bookstore in front of me, or a record store, bookstore. Really nice shot here. Just shooting through these people's shoulders. Such an aesthetic shot right here. Very nice. Definitely putting a cinematic edit on this. Oh my ladies, on your backs, yeah, this bit. This classic. Oh, thank you. Got it. Did. Yes. That was quick. That had to be quick then. Open. Looks like I've got a mist filter on. It's actually it's actually just the shop. Ooh, something quite subtly cinematic about that shot. I'm gonna shoot it through, I think, see if we can get the It's 
kind of cool actually. Oh, that's the, a cool shot, yeah. With the bokeh. Very nice. Oh, this hot dog stand just looks great. We've got the guy serving hot dogs and the two people outside as well. Very nice. This is red light. Okay, the bus is going to stop here. See if anything happens. And like some random Japanese shit every time. Mate, that's mad. The details. That's so sharp. I just got that as you was, mm, as you were it. chatting shit down here. <laughs> oh, in, no, in the were... background of that shot is you going, yeah, it does this <laughs> oh, <fuck>. <laughs> Just before I explain how I managed to get this 85 mil for 180 pounds, I wanna let you guys know about the Ultimate Street Photography Guide. It includes 30 exclusive video lessons from myself, breaking down the entire street photography process, camera settings, what compositions to look for, different ways of editing your photos. It includes free presets, exclusive raw files. It's basically everything I know about street photography condensed into 30 different lessons. Step one, step two, step three. Log in whenever you want, 24 seven access. Um, if you're interested in that type of thing, I'll leave a link in the description. Your support is massively appreciated. Now, how did I get this lens it's so goddamn cheap? I'll try and keep this story short. I was walking past CEX, that pretty much says it all, and they basically had completely mispriced this lens. That's right, CEX was selling this lens for £180. My assumption is the guy pricing the items in CEX did not know this was autofocus and when maybe he was doing his research, he'd come across manual focus 85 mil versions and thought, oh, it's the same thing. Let's put it at the same price as manual focus lenses. And a manual focus 85 mil can range from 100, 200, 300 pounds, that sort of range. This, however, is not manual focus. As you can tell, this is autofocus and these go for like 300, 400, 500 pounds, probably even more. That's pretty much that story. If I can give you any advice, make sure you check out CEX in case you do get any bargains. I don't think this is gonna ever crop up in your local CEX for 180 pounds. If it does, get it immediately. To be fair, I even walked past this once or twice about two weeks ago, because I saw it was an 85 mil and I looked at the price and it was 180 pounds and I just thought, nah, that's not real. I just thought it was a manual lens. I just kind of like went straight over my head like it could do over your head. So make sure if you pass CEX, double check what they're selling and make sure you um, well, make sure you have a good look because because if you can get a lens that's uh, cheap and maybe someone made a mistake and mispriced it, then you might as well get your grubby hands on it. So I'll be keeping this lens now and I could sell it. I could sell it for what, 400 pounds, uh, but I won't. <laughs> um, I'll be using this and I'll add it to my armory of lenses now, which is pretty cool. That's enough about me, that's enough about my photos. Let's go through the hashtag Mike Chudley on Instagram, which I feel is like a bit of an ego thing because I've just created a hashtag with my own name on it. And I feel a bit weird about it, but at the end of the day, it's just so you guys can post your content on there and then possibly get a shout out in this video. So let's do that right now. Let's have a look at the hashtag and see what you've been doing. Wow, 19.3 thousand uses or posts on the hashtag of Mike Chudley, which is Mental. First thing I've spotted is his portrait from Mustache Lens. What a name that is. Loving the lines from the texture, like the leading line kind of behind the guy. It's very well composed and uh, that pose looks powerful. Ooh, notice this just purely because of the yellow glow behind the spire. Is that what you call the top of a building like that? Probably not, but that building looks sick. But the yellow glow is what stood out there along the darkened tones as well. So that's a similar sort of style to what I would edit. I like that a lot. Nice, I've never seen this before. This is obviously Tower Bridge, classic, but you've used some sort of external framing. Um, used the railings around Tower Bridge to create some depth in the photo and it works because that stood out. Um, yeah, unique as well. I've not seen anyone shoot Tower Bridge like that. Ooh, this is clean. The tones on this look cinematic. I don't know how you've edited that. Don't take this offensively. It's like you've gone over the, what's sleep? Is that, what's that mean? Anyway, it's like you've gone over the top. I like it. Is that weird? Is that a compliment or a criticism? It's like you've edited it too much, but the vibe that you've made the photo is actually pretty sick. So um, I don't know what I was saying there. It's a good photo and it's well edited. <laughs> Classic long exposure with a bus or a train going behind. Uh, I love those types of photos. It just makes a normal portrait stand out a little bit more because there's actually motion going on, but the photo's still. It's a nice long exposure technique, so that's cool. Ooh, lovely look up shot. You know I'm a fan of these. World Trade Center in 
I'm not even going to try and pronounce. But that's a banger. Love the sky, love the edit, love the tones, love how moody it is. I like to photograph buildings to find out what the best angles are. You can definitely get a lot of cool angles shooting the look up shots like that, so great shot there, mate. Ooh, lovely sunset shot from Photo by Jamie. Bring on the early sunsets. I'm a fan of the early sunsets when you actually manage to catch them. Once I'm finished with my days now, I just like look outside and it's already dark and I'm like, oh, great. Just low light photography tonight then. Sunrises, however, look great at this time of year because if you get up like six, seven, you just wake up to a banging sunrise. But sunsets, definitely this time of year, look good if you manage to get them. But yeah, great photo here, mate. Nice and simple. You lot are shooting some mad photos. Just look at that grid on screen right there. All of those photos look sick. This one here, banger from Adrian. This guy shoots a lot of moody photos. I've followed this guy for a while now and his style is actually something that I take inspiration from. Sometimes I do look at his edits and think, I'm gonna go and edit a photo just like that because that's sick. Look at this Chinatown shot, bloody sick. That's just so good. Anyway, what I was saying, what I was saying was, just look at these like 12 photos on here. Look how sick that is. I'd be happy if my grid looks like that. Look at this, Adrian, again, <laughs> great photo. This here, cam visuals, that's fantastic. This long exposure with the lights, that's mad. I don't even know what's going on. You've obviously got a backlight shooting that guy. He's ended up being a silhouette and someone's ran around with a light. That looks amazing. Just going on to here, this long exposure or a slow shutter shot of a train, that's banging. Just a little portrait of someone from behind. Nice, moody edits. Like, even just this, what's going on here? This is sick. And this one as well, it's Leon Simpson. What a banger, I love long exposures. You've actually nailed that photo as well. I could do this all day, but I don't want this video to be like half an hour long. That's enough showing off you lot, I reckon. Thanks so much for using the hashtag, keep using it as well, and I will continue to do these at the end of the videos. All the photos you saw in this video are edited with my presets, available at mikechidley.com. A link will be in the description as well. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.